go ahead to, and I'm going to have to wrestle with this one. Is it Minion? In Augusta, Mignon, uh-huh. Mignon yes. in Augusta, Georgia. Thank you so much for your patience. Go ahead, uh, please. Uh, what, what is your question for us? Thank you. I have a very frustrating situation here. I have a, a wedding venue that's a garden venue in uh, the Augusta area, and I have planted tons and tons of violas in my beds for color. There's a particular area in the garden where I have some kind of animal that keeps pulling my violas completely out the hole and they just throw them all over the place and i don't know what it is that's doing that what kind of rodent would pull the entire plant out of the hole and we my gardener replants them every single day and i'm talking about 50 60 plants not just one i mean it's just they just go to town in this particular area and pull it straight out of the hole And they only do it to the violas and the pansies. They don't touch anything else. I thought it was the squirrels that were doing this, but my uh, gardener says he thinks it might be something else. We're about to set up a camera to see what on earth is doing this. Yesterday morning they came and they put them back in, and by 2 o'clock they're all out again. Oh, Mignon, I'm, I'm very happy that this is radio because there's no camera on me, and I've got this look of puzzlement on my face right now um <laughs> if those fight violas were pulled down right tony and amanda i'm thinking voles but you don't That's think right. that we've got squirrels that want to vandalize these bedding areas i mean actually physically pulling out the plant almost like somebody was trying to feed on this thing and they found it unpalatable all right now he, now yeah. amanda you're pointing at tony what's up tony well, it could. She is right. It could be squirrels, though. Squirrels are. Uh, uh, they can be kind of like a rodent. They are within that in that family, and they they like they curious plant uh, animals. They very curious about plants. They'll go in and they'll pull things up. But it, uh, most likely, I think, is a rabbit. I it just they will actually munch a little bit on those plants. And uh, well, but, so um, where we have the rabbits eating it, they just eat the tops off. Yeah, but in this case, they don't eat it at all. They just yank it out of the hole. Well, the it probably could be a squirrel. Eat. I, would, I think the squirrel's a good idea. Well, well and a half so. a heart trap is a very. Um, I, I've I've used them in my garden, and it's an. Um, you don't have to be there looking, and if you don't, and and unlike a camera, which is going to give you an image, if you have a have a heart trap, you might end up with the actual critter itself, and then you can certainly make an identification and find another place where that animal might be happier than in your in your wedding venue garden. And um, it's I know when you're having to deal with brides and their mothers, you certainly want the most beautiful place possible, and it sounds like you've got tons of these beautiful flowers there and um thank you it's a 15 acre garden so it's quite large and they only do it in in this particular very particular spot so i'm assuming it's the same animal that's doing it but um it's just horrible Uh, real quick before i let you go the second question i have is um sodding i'm also getting i I sodded an area this past fall in my pecan orchard that we have our ceremony and the uh, I'd like to add, add some new sodding to the area. I use St. Augustine. Is it possible to sod at this point in time, or do I need to wait um, for spring, later spring, to put down, add to the sod that I've already sodded? Tony, do you want to address the St. Augustine? Sure, I'll do that. Uh, it would. It's possible. There are a lot of people that uh, that have sod available, St. Augustine, all through the winter time. The thing I would be careful with is don't let it go through cold, especially before you get it sodded or put down or laid lay down. You don't want the cold to get to those roots. And and St. Augustine is bad about having winter kill. It has that it, that problem, but if you really take some care of it, make sure it's it, it gets watered in well. That's the one thing, so you can get the roots down and don't have any air pockets down up under it. Get it watered in or pressed down a little bit. With the, the water actually presses it down when you water it in well, and it gets it in contact with the soil and removes those air pockets. Now, the optimum, though, would be to wait. That's the bottom line. Okay. It would be better to wait, wait but when? but if you need it now, you can do it now. Wait on, when would you suggest? March or April or what would you suggest? 
Well, at least until frost, when frost is over. When you think frosts oh. are, are done sometime probably the April, depending on what the weather is going to be this year, which I hadn't got my crystal ball here in Amanda. In Amanda. But uh, if you could just just wait a little bit, it would it, until the frost or with it would be more optimum. But you can do it now. Yeah, and Mignon, okay. they, they they call it dormant sodding, and it seems kind of interesting. People laying down this this brown dormant sod, and and waiting for it to come out of dormancy. But like Tony had said, with regard to that window of opportunity, actually it's much much better when the Saint Augustine actually comes out of dormancy. But don't forget really good soil prep making sure that if when you do have that soil test that you do apply the minerals that are necessary uh, limestone or sulfur whatever is required also to put in the right ph and you'll be in really good shape so and apply that to the soil directly first before putting the exactly grass exactly you amend the soil beforehand and then you sod over the top of that and if you do have a chance take a look at our home and garden information center website it's hgic.clemson.edu and there's some really good information with regard to soil prep, as well as the timing. And I like that idea as well around the April time frame uh, for your area. I think that would work out pretty well. And I did want to go back to the squirrel. So as Tony was talking oh, about the, the sodding thing, uh, I know we need to go to the other calls. But with regard to wildlife, Tony, or Amanda, have you heard about any uh, repellents that can be used for these critters, for squirrels? Exclusion might be a little detract, might detract a little bit because I don't think your guests, Mignon, want to look at any kind of fence or exclusion material around the viola beds. But how no, about repellents? I've used liquid fence. I've used, um, I mean, I'm buying the stuff, uh, spending money on this liquid fence and all these deterrents like crazy. And it does seem to work in some areas, but in this particular bed, I don't know what it is, but. Well, Mignon, how about this, please? I'd like to leave you with uh, Will so he gets your contact information. We have a squirrel expert at, on the Clemson campus here uh, that I would like to run this one by him to see if he has any thoughts, and I'd like to forward that information to you. And, Bob, if I might add, too, with the repellents, it's important to occasionally change those. Get one that has a different base, a different formulation, something that's supposed to be you know, the, the unattractive feature. Um, because animals will get a, accustomed to one, and they'll go ahead and overcome their um, offensiveness to it. And um, so I would encourage you to you know, go find something that's other than liquid fence. You know, look for something else that works in a different way. And, um, and again, you know, you have to put those out there a lot. And so if she's got these beautiful little plants, she may be having her ear irrigation come on pretty frequently and um when that happens she's going to have to reapply good point okay. 